Hi everyone, today our lecture is about uh, the third type of complex sentences, which is adverb clauses. In this uh, uh, presentation, we'll talk about uh, what is an adverb clause, then we will tackle the six types of adverb clauses. We have adverb clauses of place, of time, reason, purpose, condition, and concession. And finally, we'll talk about the position and punctuation of adverbial clauses. For some people, they call it adverbial clauses, and others call it as adverb clauses. They both are the same here. Just a refreshment for your memory. We said that complex sentences consist of two types of clauses. One of them is independent clause, Okay. Let's take the one of them is independent clause, and the other is dependent clause. At least one dependent clause and one independent clause. Okay. And we also said that independent clause is the clause that can stand alone without a need for completion, whereas dependent clause is the clause that can't stand alone in the sentence, which means that it needs a completion. In some instances, we will talk about that at the end of our lecture, when we, how we punctuate our verbal clauses, where do we insert commas. We also mentioned that there are three types of subordinate clauses. We have noun clauses or nominal clauses. We also talked about adjectival clauses or relative clauses. And today we are tackling adverbial clauses. Right, so what's an adverbial clause? Before talking about the definition of adverbial clause, if we have, it's a, it's a dependent clause and it functions as an adverb, okay? Just like when we have the sentence, I will eat my broccoli now. Now is the adverb in this sentence, okay? In some instances, you are replacing this adverb with a group of words. I will eat my broccoli after I eat this cookie. This group of sentences functions as the adverb which indicates when you will eat your broccoli. In this case, adverb clauses is a group of words which function as an adverb in the sentence. Remember when we talked about the nominal clauses, they function as nouns. When we talked about adjectival clauses, they used to function as adjective. Here, in this type of clauses, they function as adverb. And again, it has a subject and a verb, okay? Sometimes, some words that are composed of a group of words and these, and these function as an adverb, but they do not comprise a subject of a verb and a verb. In this case, they are called adverb phrase. It's not an adverbial clause. If it doesn't have a subject and a verb, in this case, it will be called adverb phrase. Okay. These uh, adverbial clauses, they might modify or describe the verbs, adverbs, and adjectives, and they add relevant information or descriptive information to your content. Okay? They can add information, for example, uh, when something happened, where something happened, why, how, how much, and under what condition. And that's why you see we've got different types of adverb clauses. Okay. Usually these adverb clauses are, they begin or they are preceded or they are initiated by a subordinating conjunctions. It's very essential to have subordinated conjunctions because these subordinated conjunctions are telling us the meaning of the clause that you are writing. 
some of these exa example of these subordinated conjunctions are because of the if, when, while, and only if. And as I said, each one of them has different uh, meaning according to the type of the adverbial clause. For example, in this sentence, when spring arrives, okay, if you look at this, the flowers bloom. If you look at this sentence, the flowers bloom is the main clause. When spring arrives, if we look carefully at this sentence, when is the subordinated conjunction? Spring is the subject, arrives is the verb. And this is the dependent clause. For example, if you say, when spring arrives and you remain silent, you feel that your sentence needs a completion. That's why we call it dependent clause. And this type of uh, dependent clause is adverbial and it tells me about, it, it talks about the time. Okay? So, when spring arrives is an adverbial clause of time. Fine. Let's move now to the types. Now we have the types of adverbial clauses. As I said earlier, we have adverbial clause of a place, of time, reason, purpose, condition, and concession. So, so, the first one is adverb clauses of place. Usually, adverb clauses of a place, they answer the question of where. Right, and the uh, subordinated conjunctions which are used in this type of adverb clauses is where and wherever. For example, I look for parties where I can dance and meet new people. There, I look for parties is the dependent independent clause. Where I can dance and meet new people is the dependent clause, which needs a completion. And it tells you, it, it describes the place that you prefer to go to. The other sentence is, wherever there is a dance party, there is an opportunity to meet new people. Okay, if you look carefully at this sentence, you notice that this time the dependent clause came at the beginning. And in the other one, in the previous one, it came after. You see here, there is no problem between swapping the position of the dependent and independent clause, provided you punctuate it correctly, which is a topic that we will talk about at the end of this lecture. Okay, you just need to put a comma if you put the dependent clause at the beginning of the sentence. Okay, all what you need to do is to know the subordinated conjunctions that you are using to tell me the type of adverb clause. For example, here, since we have the subordinated conjunction when, where, or wherever, it indicates that this is adverbial clause of a place. Next time is adverbial clause of time. And an adverbial clause of time, it answers the question when. And usually the subordinated conjunctions, we have as soon as, we have once, we have when, we have after. All right. For example, as soon as you start dancing salsa, you burn about 10 calories a minute. Okay? You can see that as soon as you start dancing salsa is the dependent clause initiated by the subordinated conjunction as soon as, and then you have you burn about 10 calories a minute is the independent clause. And you can see that there is a comma between them since the uh, uh, dependent clause came at the beginning. Look at the other uh, sentence. You won't stop dancing once your feet, sorry, once you feel at ease. 
with the tango steps. You see that these are not my sentences. That's why I'm facing some difficulty in reading them. All right. And if you notice that, once initiate the dependent clause, once you feel at ease with the tango steps, this is the dependent clause. It follows the independent clause. And in this case, you don't need comma. The other one, when the referee brews the final whistle, all the players left the pitch. Pitch, whatever you are playing. Okay, and in this sentence, the when the referee uh, brew, brews the final whistle, this is the what the independent the dependent clause of the players left the pitch are the uh, is the, the independent. After the exams are done, we are all leave the school compound. After the exams are done, this is the dependent clause. Okay, and as I said, if you look at it carefully, it describes the time. The next one is adverb clause of reason. An adverb clause of reason, it, it says it's not, it's, you know, this can be indicated from its name, that adverb clause of reason, they answer the question, why? And usually we have, because we have since, we have as, we have for. Okay, I love to dance because dancing is a great exercise. Since I need more exercise, I signed up for a ballet class. Again, you can see that I love to dance is the uh, is the I love to dance is the independent clause because dancing is a great exercise is the dependent clause. Okay. And again, in the next one, since I need more exercise, is the dependent clause. Came at the beginning, there is comma after words, and then the dependent clause, I, independent clause. I signed up for ballet class, came after the dependent clause. And the other one is, she won the race. And here I'm showing you where is the result clause, where is the reason. She won the race, which is the result, and the result is the uh, independent clause, for she had done enough of practice. This is the reason clause, and for is my subordinate conjunction. As she stole the neighbor's umbrella, this is the reason clause. She was arrested, and this is the result. And result is the main clause, and uh, the reason clause is the subordinating clause. When I say main clause, I mean independent clause. When I say subordinate clause, I mean dependent clause. You see, I'm using them differently, or sometimes I say main clause, sometimes subordinate clause or independent clause, because I want you to know the names. Uh, correctly. And the next type is there is a close association between this type of clauses and the previous one. This one shows the purpose and the previous one talks about the reason. Okay, they are close associated to each other and this is the clause which tells me about the purpose of the clause. Okay, what's the purpose behind? So, and the common conjunctions which are used in adverb clause of purpose are, we have so that, we have in order that, and we have least. She worked hard, this is her result, so that she might pass the test, and this is her purpose. Okay, her purpose was to pass the test. We eat in order that we may 
live or we may survive. And this is our purpose. Work carefully, least you should fall. Here there is a note that I need to add here. For example, should is the auxiliary which can be used after least. It is the only auxiliary which you can use after least. Okay? And when you use so that or in order that, you need, usually they are followed by auxiliary verbs like will, may, and can. Okay? So at the end of our lecture, we are going to make a time, we are going to make a table which gathers all these tools so that you can, you know, differentiate between them and you know the function of each of them. The next one is the adverb clause of concession. An adverb clause of concession, as if you are having two ideas which contrast each other. Okay? For example, if I want to say, even though it was raining, we had a lot of fun. So you've got two ideas, and these ideas contrast each other. Okay? For example, when I say, although she was uh, she wasn't beautiful she had been admired by many people okay and here uh, in adverb clauses of concession they are usually introduced by uh, subordinated conjunctions such as although though even though even if in spite of despite while and whereas I need to mention here that despite and in spite of, they mean the same and they are usually followed by a noun phrase. Okay, look at them. In spite of his poverty, this is a noun phrase. And sometimes they are followed by ing form. Okay. And despite, despite the difference in their age, they were close friends. Compare them with though. Though you hate me, I will always serve you faithfully. So you see here in though, they mean the same, but they have different things that they need to be followed by. Though you hate me, it is followed by a subject and a verb. This is an exception for the adverb clauses in spite of and despite. They are followed by uh, 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 an other place, as I said earlier. I would like to go out, although it is raining. Again, if you look carefully at the position of the subordinate clause in comparison with the main clause, now it is following the main clause, and you see we don't need a comma. I will go even if you forbid me. I enjoyed the film, even though I had a headache. As I said earlier, we uh, even if I fail, I'll try to again and again until I succeed. And the last type, the last two ones are while and whereas. And you see that here, they, they, you are not comparing two things. You are saying they are giving the meaning of although. For example, while I admire your courage, I think you ought not to go on this dangerous journey. And the other one is, whereas John had more enemies than friends, his brother was extremely popular. Okay? Here, but if you can see that, whereas is comparing the two of them. And likewise. Right. The next one is adverb clause of condition. All of you know uh, that if a clause is uh, uh, combining two types of sentences, one of them is the result clause and the other one is condition clause. And you know that there are three cases for if. If, for example, you will buy a new home if you save money. All of you remember that the first one is uh, the auxiliary well and here if you save money is the present the next 
this condition is you would buy a new home with instead of well if you saved money and the uh, dependent close is uh, in the past and the third condition you would have bought you have would followed by uh, present perfect you would plus have plus the past participle and this is in the main clause if you had saved money you had followed by the past perfect you the subject had and saved so yeah in the uh, other clause of conditions you it answers uh, under what conditions and usually the subordinated conjunctions in this type of adverbial clauses is if unless and whether or not unless you work hard this is the conditional clause see it is coming at the beginning of the sentence followed by the comma you will not do well in your exam and this is the result clause and if you look carefully on page uh, in your book if you need more information about it you can look carefully on page 326 327 328 and 300 yeah 328 you see that if it means if not and usually you can see that uh, if they have a swapping position for example unless you work hard you will not do well in the exam usually you can see that it has a, a, a negation the negation comes in the main clause you can use if you use if instead of unless okay let's use if if you uh, instead of unless if you work hard you will get you will do well in the exam if you will not work hard you won't do well in the exam you can see that uh, uh, the negative and affirmative becomes the negative becomes affirmative and the affirmative becomes negative here and it also has the, th the same three conditions for if the same case is whether or not whether you put these dots which means that you are putting inserting some words in between whether we like it or not this is the conditional clause we will take the examination and this is the result clause you can use it in the same second case of if whether we liked it or not we would take the examination the result clause and you can say whether we whether whether we had liked it or not we would have taken the examination so that's why the, uh, the it's, uh, even though they mean differently but they are used in the same way and now we are moving to the position and punctuation of adverb clauses you see that I, while i was explaining the types of adverb clauses i was talking about their punctuation and i said that they are flexible in their position in a way that they can be uh, they can occupy the start middle or end of a sentence okay and this is based on where you prefer to or where they perfectly fit the first position are very close at the beginning of a sentence and this is as i said usually followed by comma whether you like it or not you have to attend the afternoon lessons you can see that adverb clause came at the beginning of the sentence and it is followed by a comma unless you apologize you will be punished the adverb clause came at the beginning and it is followed by a sentence sorry by a comma the next one is adverb clause at the middle of the sentence and usually here you need two commas for example dogs although they bark they cannot scare visitors 
In this tag, or in this case, you can see that it is interrupting the main clause. It is interrupting the independent clause. For example, usually your independent clause is dogs, uh, or dogs, although they bark. Yeah, dogs cannot scare visitors, okay? Usually the independent clause is dogs cannot scare visitors. But you are interrupting it saying dogs and you are putting the in the dependent clause or the subordinating clause in the middle and in this case it has to be preceded and followed by commas. James, although he is good at mathematics, he cannot score everything. Okay, and the third example is chocolate. It due to its low melting point can never be used to bake. The third position is adverb clause at the end of a sentence. When it is placed at the end of the sentence, adverb clause usually do not require any additional punctuation. As I was saying earlier, for example, you need to keep on practicing the song until you get it right. Give us a call when you get past Melbourne. So when you get past Melbourne is the uh, subordinate clause and it is coming at the final position of the sentence. This is all for the complex sentences. I hope that this, you will find it useful and by practice we'll do more practice and wait for the uh, uh, combination of all these tools to see how they function differently. Thank you very much for your listening.